So today we are going to be talking about the movie Farha. Talks about the Palestinian Nakba that was released on Netflix last week. And I'm going to give basically a full review of what I thought of the movie and what this movie is about. So if we want to start talking about this, Farha is a girl, 14 years old, who experienced the Nakba in 1948 where the Israelis occupied Palestine illegally after the Holocaust. And in this girl's eyes as a 14-year-old, this, this girl, actually a survivor who became a refugee in Syria, told the story of herself, Farha, and the true events that happened and what she experienced. This movie is all in Arabic and has been released on Netflix for everyone to watch. And it is a big, big move for Netflix because a lot of people, especially the Jewish community, the Zionists and all that, have been trying to take this down on Netflix. And Netflix stood their ground and not taking this movie down. So good job on Netflix for standing their ground and for showing the freedom of speech and freedom of storytelling of the Palestinian side. And this is only just the beginning. And it's really fantastic to take this first step to talk about what actually happened in Palestine and for voices to be heard. So what is the Nakba? We can just educate you guys on this for like two seconds for anyone who has never even heard of that before, who's never even heard of the Palestine-Israel occupation, which is impossible because it's literally talked about in every news channel, news website, a a anything. But just to sum this up, the Nakba is the catastrophe, which that's what it means in Arabic, which talked about the occupation that happened in 1948. Now, in 1947, after the Holocaust, the Jewish had no places to go. And when the Jewish had no places to go, Palestine, a land of all three religions, not a land of Islam, just to, just to be clear about that, invited and opened and welcomed their arms to the Jewish people to settle in the land of Palestine as a safe haven so they can, you know, recover and just uh, start their lives again because honestly, like, the Holocaust was, su I mean, very, very traumatizing. A lot of people lost their lives and people just want to start their lives over again. You know, honestly, and, and that's great. You know, it, it's good to be a good person. But then in 1947, the UN, the United Nations, for some reason got involved in this. And also during that time, the British was basically like had had the major, uh, I guess, land share of the Middle East. So they still had control of like what what they own, per se. But uh, the UN plan in 1947, they gave like more than more than 50 percent of the land to to Israel. Which is very confusing because, like, Palestine welcomed arms, like I said, to the Jewish to settle in in the, in Palestine so they, they can recover. But then all of a sudden, in 1947, the UN just gives, like, oh, hey, you know, you, you can have a part of this land. Ill illegally, of course. And then in 1949, between 1949 and 1967, all of a sudden, Israel is just taking up a lot of what Palestine used to be the West Bank and Gaza, which is now an open-air prison because nobody can enter or, is, or exit that land without proper checkpoints. And even to this day, my friends have passports to enter to Palestine and they still have trouble every single day. And, to, and from 2005 onward, this is what's become of Palestine. This is illegal, by the way super illegal because this was initially the UN plan right here right but they just kept occupying and occupying even even this UN plan sucks but this has just been illegally occupying for for till today till 2022 so that's what the occupation is all about and when the movie farha came out the UN acknowledges that this is a catastrophe. So the United Nations finally, from 1947 until today, on Wednesday, uh, which was literally last week, passed a resolution to mark the founding of the modern state of Israel in 1948, a catastrophe. 
Because it was. Because it was. Palestinians consider the establishment of Israel and its existence to this day as the Nakba, which is catastrophe in Arabic. And the world body decided to acknowledge the Palestinian version of the events with the resolution, which was adopted by a vote of 90-30 with 47 abstinence, which, you know, like, the people that didn't vote. And, of course, the biggest countries, United States, Canada, United Kingdom, most European Union countries, and Germany voted against the anti-Israel resolution. No surprise. Honestly, no surprise. So then on Twitter, this uh, the ambassador of Israel said this. The disaster that the Palestinians brought upon themselves with their own aggression by waging a war against Israel. The disaster that the Arab world perpetuates to this day by refusing to integrate the descendants of the refugees from that same war into Arab society while using them with your help as political tools. Try to imagine the international community commemorating your country's Independence Day by calling it a disaster. What a disgrace. Not a disgrace, actually. Uh, not a disgrace at all, because you definitely killed, not you, sp not him specifically, but the country definitely killed um, thousands of people. Thousands. Over 700,000 Palestinians were forced to leave their own land because of this catastrophe. And you call that an Independence Day? Dude, you sh <laughs> I would not call that Independence Day at all, to be honest. So then the uh, trailer for Farha, the trailer for Farha um, is about this girl who is uh, very determined to go to school, to be educated. Because back then in 1948, the Middle Easterners are not really... Um, they educate the men and they have the wife, the, the girls become wives and like bear the children. But she wanted to be different. So this was in the eyes of a 14-year-old girl who experienced the Nakba and had her father lock her away uh, somewhere safe. Locks her in this cell. Okay. We don't know how long she was in this cell. We just we just see what she's going through. She's literally in this cell, experiencing, and, and she's listening through everything, through everything. And she's just looking through the peepholes as much as she can, seeing the deaths of her family members until the end of this movie. Now, finally... I'm going to be giving my full review of this movie. Now, first of all, this movie is an hour and a half long. And in the beginning, it was great because we see we see old Palestine. We see how peaceful it is. We see how the village is. We see how uh, families are with each other. We see in her eyes what Palestine is and how beautiful it is with the nature and the water and the old town and how everyone was. Comes the day of the Nakba. All it is, it's fear. And we're seeing that. She's experiencing it. You know, she had the opportunity to escape with her friend to go to the borders. Her dad told her to escape and she decided to stay with her dad. And so her dad had to lock her up in this room to keep her safe. She had the resources to stay alive. But she's hearing the gunshots. She's hearing people get killed. And all she's doing is staying inside. And her dad is in the fields trying to mitigate the damages. Now, <coughs> I, I don't want to... I'm literally saying the full story here. But the rest of the movie was Farha being inside the safe keep. In my opinion, I would give this movie probably a 4 out of 10. Why? Hear me out, okay? Before you guys like jump at me in the comments... I wish they would have shown more about what happened during the Nakba. As soon as she went inside that safe keep, 45 minutes 
of the movie was her in the safe keep. Now, granted, we see what she's going through, but it would be nice to see what everybody else is going through. It would be nice to see people escaping Palestine and seeking refuge in other countries. It would be nice to see other family members who understand what they're going through as well. Now, I get it. It's in the eyes of Farha. I get that. And IMDb gives them a rating of 8.6 out of 10 and 91% popularity, as it should be, because this is what it's all about. The voice that we have to yell. But I definitely wish they put a little more. And so I, I've discussed it with my some of my friends about this movie. And one of them mentioned, like, you know, it's baby steps. It's literally the first movie ever to be talked about the Nakba. The first platform, Netflix, to even accept and let us, like, you know, show our voices in this movie. And it's the first of many. But I wish they did more. I really wish they did. Great movie. But 45 minutes in a room, to be honest, I started skipping through the movie. But let me know in the comments below what, what you guys think. And honestly, if you're here for this long, can you guys like literally subscribe down below? Um, I love talking about like, you know, uh, new updates, new movies, new topics, things like that. And I really want to hear your input on this. If you guys even watched it or going to watch it or if you guys had reviews about it, it'd be it'd be really nice to have a conversation all the time. You know, that's what you know, uh, that's what YouTube's all about. People post their content, people post their opinions and then we talk about it below. Overall, like I said, uh, I would recommend this movie just for educational purposes. But I like I said, I wish they did more and hopefully maybe in other Nekba movies, there will be more. So. Uh, thank you guys for watching. And if you guys have, like I said, come this far, like literally like, subscribe, share. Like, you know, it's not that hard. You're, you've literally come this far. So um, click that and um, I will see you next video. Peace.